Hey folks, uh, welcome back to a, another edition of SciTube HD. Today I'm going to show you um, what I've been working on lately. And what I have here, you're probably wondering what this is. This is a Marx generator. Marx generators were invented probably around more than 100 years ago by a guy with the last name Marx. Not to be confused with Karl Marx or his associates, but this guy was a scientist that wanted to generate high voltages for particle physics and other types of experiments. So he came up with a way of generating very high voltages, starting off with much lower voltages. And this is what this apparatus does. And what, what this consists of is a series of capacitors. These are made of plastic bottles, uh, disposable plastic bottles. And I'll put a link in the description to the type of bottles, um, these. And there's foil on the inside and the outside of each bottle. So each one of these functions as what's known as a Leyden jar. So it's, it's effectively a capacitor. And I've measured the capacitance of each one and it's around 200 picofarads. So there's 10 stages on this side and there's 10 stages on that side. Now, down here is a small uh, voltage multiplier powered by some lithium ion batteries. And this generates between 30,000 and 40,000 volts DC. Now, if you take that 30, say, just say it's 30,000 volts, and you charge each one of these capacitors up in parallel to 30,000 volts, and that is achieved through these chains of resistors. Each, resist, each chain consists of about 1.7 mega ohms of resistance. So you charge each one of these capacitors up on both sides to 30,000 volts. When, when the voltage continues to increase, the capacitor can no longer contain the voltage. So what happens is, it sparks to this, which then joins it to this capacitor, which sparks, which then joins, them, joins it to this capacitor, and it goes all down the chain until all the capacitors are now connected in series. So you have 20 capacitors charged to 30,000 volts connected together in series. So your effective voltage across each tower is 600,000 volts. And if, if I put 40,000 volts on the capacitor, on, on, on these capacitors, then it's 800,000 volts. It's simply 20 times 40, which is 800,000 volts. And that's the basics of it. Charging them in parallel and discharging them through their effective spark gaps, which act like wires because they're conducting, discharging them in series. So that's the basics. Now let me tell you a bit why you ask, why do I have two towers? Why not make it just one tall tower that goes up to the ceiling? And the reason for that is, is that you're going to get what's called corona losses. So if I just built one tall tower with 20 of these capacitors on them, the top, of, the top one would be at 800,000 volts, and the bottom one would be at, at effectively zero volts. So there'd be a lot of corona loss off of the top capacitors. But by constructing it this way, where well, this one is effectively plus 400,000, sorry, this one is effectively plus 400,000 volts, you see the red wire here? And this one is effectively minus 400,000 volts relative to ground, which is the bottom, then you're going to get lo less loss. So let me just show you this thing in action. So what we're going to do, and I use what's called a chicken stick here. This is a chicken stick. And the reason I use this is because of these very high voltages, even holding that switch would be enough to get me an electric shock. And I've calculated that the amount of energy in each spark that jumps, this is about 15 to 16 inches from here to here, but I've had it up to 18 inches and it worked fine. So the amount of energy in each spark is approximately between 2 joules and 3.5 joules per spark. So it's a lot of energy in a very, very short period of time, under a microsecond. So you can imagine how much power there is. You know, if you think about uh, 3.5 joules of energy in nanoseconds, you, that's a very, very high amount of power. So we're gonna turn the lights down to show you this. All right, folks, here goes. I've got a bit of hearing protection on, because you can imagine uh, 3.5 joules released in few nanoseconds, that's a lot, that makes, that's very loud. So, here it goes.
So what you just witnessed was charging each one of those capacitors up to 30 to 40,000 volts. And then that spark represents the discharge of the same capacitors in series. So whatever voltage is on each one gets multiplied by the number of capacitors. Now, I've tried making these type of Marx generators in the past with commercial uh, ceramic capacitors, but those things are very, very sensitive. And if you overvolt them, uh, you know, if you even get close to their upper limit, they fail and, 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 and they're, they're a pain to replace. But these ones, I've tested these ones up to 50,000 volts without any issue. And all these are is basically stuff that would end up in the landfill. So this is what I basically use to make those capacitors. Basically an antioxidant infusion. So you can get healthy at the same time that you do your electronics uh, high voltage experiments. So I use these. And the good thing about these bottles is the plastic is relatively thick, which enables it to act as a dielectric material for very high voltages. This label, which is the other good thing about this particular bottle, peels right off without leaving any residue, and you're left with a bottle like that. You just wash it out, you cut it to the right size. I cut it roughly about halfway down the bottle, and then I, I left about an inch from the edge where I started wrapping a diesel of aluminum foil, and I wrapped the aluminum foil on the outside as well as on the inside to make a capacitor. And then I used aluminum wire coiled inside it to act as the inner electrode for the, for the uh, positive or negative charge. Some quick construction details, starting with the cleaned out bottles. They're trimmed and covered on the inside and outside with aluminum foil. The wire that you see coming out of it is the central electrode, and you can trim those down. They're circular and they fit well. You score the styrofoam, then you attach these by scoring into the styrofoam first. Make sure the wire is central inside the cup and then epoxy in place. You're going to use chains of resistors like this. These consist each one of five resistors, each 330 kilo ohms, totaling 1.7 mega ohms. Uh, soldered together in series and then covered over in shrink wrap tubing. Resistors are connected to the outsides of each of the foils on the bottle capacitors like this, all the way down. The eye hooks that you see here are connected to the bottle capacitor below to the inner foil, which is oppositely charged. Resistor chains are added to the back of the styrofoam board as shown here. This gives you your typical marks array. The final setup looks something like this with the positive tower on the right with the blue styrofoam and the negative tower on the left with the pink styrofoam. This depicts how everything is connected together. It's surprisingly simple and amazingly effective at amplifying the voltage by the number of stages. So on this, on this side, which is the positive coming out of there, the outside is negative and the inside is positive. Now on this limb, the outside is positive and the inside is negative. So this is a smaller scale model of this. See how small it is compared to that. And this contains the ceramic capacitors I just talked about. And so one limb is positive and the other is negative, as you can see here. So this was just a prototype to make sure that it works. And then I basically use this to wire this bigger one. And at the bottom here, you'll notice the wire that I'm using is rated for at least 30,000 volts. So, this, this prevents any shorting, you know, the wires come quite close to each other, as you can see here, but they don't short with each other, simply because they, rate, they have the voltage rating within the specs of this small voltage multiplier. And all that output that you just saw just came from these three small rechargeable lithium-ion cells. Now here's a really interesting looking light trail picture of the discharges, and you can see how random they are. They're extremely bright 
considering I've got 20 capacitors connected in series. I'm going to put up an instructable or a WordPress document to show you exactly how I made this if you'd like to repeat the same experiment. And one word of caution, with Marx generators, the amount of uh, energy stored in them is, is pretty dangerous and you don't want to get shocked. I've already experienced that. It's very painful and it can be, it could be lethal depending on um, whatever, how big your capacitors are. So uh, thanks for watching and please don't forget to uh, like and subscribe.